What's going on everybody? Happy Friday. Let me see if we can get this video done on a third time. What kind of sports card Illuminati out there trying to stop me from doing it. Because each time I've done this video and I'm in the middle of it, it freezes because McAfee pops up and I've disabled that McAfee each time. So we're going to see how we get it out this time. All right. So I've been talking about doing this video for a long time. One more, a little bit more in depth on to it. I um, was trying to have an actual game plan, but I decided to freestyle it. Freestyle seems the easiest and most logical thing to me. Plus, there's really no agenda on to it, and hopefully I can just stay on point more than anything. So as you guys can see, we're using the loose term word influencers not to be confused with content creator because to me a content creator could have zero subs or a thousand two thousand ten thousand hundred thousand millions of uh, subscribers an influencer well to me that's where you have a lot of people that are following you subscribing you and reading everything and watching everything you post on every social media platform so when I think of the word influencer, especially in the sports card industry, I'm not thinking of the top three people. I think everybody only maybe only three people have 100,000 subscribers. That's Pac-Man, Sports Card Investor, and Jabs that I could think of. When I'm thinking of influencers in the sports card realm, I'm going to think of Gary V. I know, I know a lot of people think that's a dirty word, Gary V. But it's really not because for anybody who was in the hobby pre-Gary V. We kind of secretly thank him because he made us some money bringing in everybody he brought in, whether they were um, athletes or people jumping from sneakers, stocks, whatever else they were into because they flip every couple years trying to make a big you know, buck. And trust me, they knew how to get that market going because during COVID, we had very little supply and a whole lot of demand when all those people came through, so stuff shot through the roof. What a good chunk of us thought is how long could this last? We laughed that, you know, it was lasting three months, six months. Holy cow, it's been a year, you know. It was just insane. I don't think we'll ever see something like this again. Maybe. But I really don't think so. It all fell into play with, um, you know, the three big backlog had to a lot being sent in, plus COVID mandations did kill a couple of You know, once somebody in the office got sick, they found time. Stuff had to be, you know, that stuff too. But, you know, really, with it, there's just so much out there um, with... I, want, I hate using the word content because it makes me just, you know, th thinking about the word YouTuber and everything. But there's so many videos. There we go out there. They're now popping up about the card market crash. Um, What goes up must come down. I mean, that's just something that we learned at a young age. It was never going to be sustainable. No. Nobody had thought so or was it in their videos they're just wrong i mean think about how hard during the hype was it to pick five players out there that were spiking i mean come on now we had bull bull um who try to think Rui hachimura try to think football wise i mean they were popping everybody out once but i mean i think even ryan leaf cards got a slight push during that time frame i mean ryan leaf I mean, we even went into the Pokemon realm, made it super famous. We had DC and Marvel cards, the PMGs, the comic books, you name it, all went up. All collectibles shot way up. So, when I'm sitting here thinking about this, you know, and I see these videos popping up left and right, I'm like, where were you guys at in 2020 talking about this stuff? Even late 2020, I'd settle for. Not many people out there were talking about it. There was a handful of... Uh, People talking openly about it. It was almost like if you were an old school wrestler. It's like kayfabe out there. You didn't talk about it. You know, it was left behind the scenes type deal for just those people's information out there. And, oh man, you're rebelling. You know, you're talking bad about the hobby. We like positivity. No, it's not necessarily negativity. 
but it's given people who are coming back in the hobby the options to be like, hey, look at the future, look at this, look at trends, look at pop counts, look at serial numbers, this stuff can't sustain, blah, blah, whatever, you know, the whole fourth. But it was deemed as negative content by many content creators out there or YouTubers or you know, whatever else is out there. Um, and to me, I, I was just shocked that they'd want to do that. But I got it. You want to have your views. You want to have your subscribers. You want to make your ad revenue. And trust me, ad revenue is not much. Um, even people like jabs and stuff like that there, I could take what I make figure per thousand views and give an estimate of what they make. It's not a whole lot of money, um, on average. I mean, now jabs, yeah, he probably makes, you know, a good chunk, but he also gets a lot of donations. Now YouTube takes part of those donations. I think it's, I forget what you get, like 70% of the donations, something like that. I'd have to look to be honest with you on to it. But, you know, it's not like you're going to become wealthy like Logan Paul and some of those other people out there that are very famous to their YouTube channels. Mr. Beast, that are, Mr. Beast making millions a month. But, um, you know, other guys making tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars with these big corporate sponsorships. This is a small world, the sports car community, because... Even if we branch out to the other continents out there, I mean, I don't think anybody's ever going to hit a million viewers or subscribers unless they buy them, to be honest, flat out uh, with that. Because I know I got you want to have catchy thumbnails and catchy titles to draw people in and get that view. Who cares if they give you a thumbs down and all that mentality It's out there. It is what it is. My biggest concern was, we were pumping and dumping. Some people were pumping cars they already bought so they could make money. You know who they are out there uh, that did that. I mean, you don't even know who they are. A lot of you guys say their names in the chat all the time. That's what they do. They were out there providing what they called content pumping and dumping. Heck, I mean, there's some people would say, oh, I just do this because I'm using this as a documentary of my life in sports cars. That's okay. And there's some people out there that are doing that truthfully. Don't get me wrong, there's some that aren't. Some of them out there just want to be Norm. Everybody know who Norm is, right? Right there, Norm. From Cheers. Everybody wants to know your name. They want to be able to go to these shows all over. People recognize them and everything else out there. It is what it is with that, but, you know, in the long run, it's going to be hard to keep that going. Because while you're doing stuff like that, you also still have to keep pushing out stuff, too. And when the topics are dry, what do you do? You go back and start hitting stuff from a year or two years ago or what other people have already put work into onto it. And, I mean, I got it. That's what they're going to do. My, like I said, biggest concern is now we're just starting to talk about this in the last six months. Very few people put it out there. And the idea of putting it out back in 2020 and, you know, a lot of us were, well, not a lot of us, the handful of us that were doing it was because we knew there was going to a big, big surge of people coming in. We wanted to keep a good chunk of them because a lot of people are going to get discouraged. Some people are going to hold stuff forever and they're bought like, oh, a Luca Prism for PSA 10 for like two grand, 1800 now it's a four to $600 card. They're discouraged. They're no longer in it. They don't want to take the loss. I see it all the time out there. There's some people because their family or girlfriend, boyfriend, somebody out there is giving them the alternative, get rid of it, or you lose me, they're going to sell cheap. So you're still going to be able to flip and make a profit. Whoever buys it, they got to get rid of it. They ate the loss. They learned their lesson. They're not going to be back in the hobby again. They probably won't let their kids get into it. Because the idea is that, you know, we were floating back and forth, you know, was that, if I had, was doing sports cards, my kid would probably get interested into it. He'd probably die down somewhere, you know, around the ages of 16 because, you know, he finds uh, partying girls or, you know, boys or whatever to their fancy. They go to college, they get married, then they have kids, and then their kids are like, oh, I like baseball cards. Like, oh, I got some, and it brings them all back in together. That way, at least, it, it would continue going on and on. Some people would stay in it the whole time frame, you know, from age six to, you know, present age, too. 
But we didn't want to lose every single person out there that came back in. Where if that happened, we were going to see a huge, huge market dip onto it all. Um, that's one of the biggest reasons where I was talking in my videos. I wasn't doing a lot of buying. I was doing more selling. Other than my allocations and stuff, I was just selling. Occasionally, I'd you know pick stuff up on a, on a low and stuff like that. Mostly because I'd win them or they were in breaks. But I wasn't buying big cards. You didn't see me buying that 23rd Jordan Auto I need just to make that mysterical number 23 because the prices were just stupid crazy and still kind of are. But I'm going to pull something up here. Um, when you guys see who's done these videos, I'm not like shooting them down or nothing like that. It's all because on YouTube, I just did a search real quick. It said card market crash. So block out the person that made the video. And just look at the views and how many days ago that they posted this. And I'm going to just hit a few of them up here real quick. And hopefully McAfee does not pop back up on us. There we go. All right. Yes, Sports Card Investor is the top video when you do that. He's been talking about for the last four, five, six months. He even turned the leaf talking about all the colors of Prism and Select Go and Retail. But guess what? We were all talking about that a long time ago. I don't know if he has people give him ideas for videos or they go out there and watch other videos. And like, Jeff, you need to do a video like this. It'll draw you X amount of views, possibly. You know, with somebody that has that many subscribers, should be having good content out there. Whether they consider positive or negative, but showing all the different trends, whether it's good or bad out there, and should have been doing it from the get go on to it, not just recently. That's my biggest issue with a lot of this stuff. Uh, nine days ago, this video posted. Four months ago, the market crash. How do we get here? Who's there to blame? I mean, seriously, why are we looking? Oops, who's there to blame? If you really dig down deep enough and search deep enough, really, everybody's to blame on it. Whether I sold my Luca for seven grand, the Prism Silver PSA 10, now they're like, I don't know, two, three grand. I don't, I really don't know. I haven't looked at the price of one in a long time frame. I contributed to it because I sold high. I mean, you, you can look at all kinds of different ways out there, but who's to blame? I mean... A lot of people will say, oh, this guys took all the retail off the shelves. It was the guys that backlog PSA, back at SGC, all this stuff. In some way or fashion, everybody is a tad bit to blame onto it. Even, I mean, with even with me, I mean, yeah, I sold high. I mean, somebody out there got stuck eventually with that and took losses on the stuff. Then you see people saying eBay ruined the sports card market. I mean, really? I don't think eBay ruined it. But I didn't watch the video either, so I have no idea what they're talking about. Um, but just that title, to catch you to come watch the video and stuff like that. I mean, that statement there, that's just, it's part of the reason. It's not that they, eBay, is the sole demon out there and did it. Uh, just scroll down a couple more. This one here, Ed Collects. Don't know the guy, don't watch his videos. Well, how much money I lost since the card market crashed in 2021? We're still going to call it a card market crash because guess what? All the people came in to do stocks. That's what they called it. A market crash. It's a market. Blah, blah, blah. Evil, dirty word out there again. Um, you know, like I said, everything went up. It's going to come down. I still don't think we're at that bottom peak level yet until PSA, Beckett, catch up. SGC is pretty much caught up. And no, I'm not throwing HGA in the mix of it because they got their own demons to work out over there. Then we see a guy, one called Flipping Sports Car Died in 2021. Here's why. Okay, if you really think it died, it didn't. It drizzled down. And my thing is there's still people out there flipping today. They're out there finding them guys who are in too high. They're starting to think, I need to sell and get what I can out of this now and get out of it and live my life. And they're cutting them deals 70 80% of eBay comps and selling it for 80 90%. They're posting on eBay and getting their 87%, whatever it may be. So don't get me wrong, flipping's still going to be alive. That's another one we call it our evil little dirty words out there, flipping. Because um, back when we were doing we called flipping sports cards. We used to take them, flip them in the air. If I did it first and it landed heads, say my buddy Brian flipped, 
If he flipped it, it was tails, I won his card. If he flipped it, it went on heads, he won my card. That's what I think of flipping. That's not what we used to do to bet gamble with besides poker, or Uno, you name it, we did it. But if you guys just scroll through here, I mean, heck, there's even people out there going to card shows asking people what they think. I mean, if you cannot honestly sit there and think and put a video out on your thoughts on to where you have to ask other people their opinions just to make a video, to me, that just shows your knowledge in the industry is just bad. Um... You may think that, you know, you're popular because you got X amount of views, X amount of subscribers, whatever it may be out there, but it's still bad. These guys here, Sports Card Radio, great channel, very funny content, great content, too. Um, the best part of it all is they've been around for a long time. I'm guessing at least 10 years. And I know for a fact they used to be the guys that would put checklists out for everybody, especially when we were breaking and stuff like that. They did a lot of articles on the, like, Heroes of Sports scam, the trimmers back in the day, all that stuff. They have the art. I think they're still on their website if you search them on there. Um, but they've been around for a long time frame. Great information flows onto it. They've been talking about this since 2020. You know, one of the very few channels that, you know, are out there trying to look out for everybody and give everybody the information to make their own decisions instead of being influenced into these their top fives this week Rui Hachimura Bull Bull Ryan Leaf you know whatever else there was during that time frame but if you just scroll and look at this stuff look at the days on this stuff nine hours now their stuff they've been talking the whole time 11 days ago is the market in trouble four days ago seven days ago two weeks ago I mean if you look <laughs> it's like soon as sorry guys my throat's starting to get dry as soon as somebody out there I'm grabbing a water bottle behind here hold on as soon as they see somebody gets a lot of views as a popular channel let's do a video on this I mean that's the current way of doing it I guess I'm not too sure but I'm going to pull this down real quick just so we don't freeze out anymore but this is why I really wanted to do more freestyle onto this subject because while a lot of people talk either good or bad about, you know, the people on YouTube doing these videos or whatsoever, I really question how many people are doing it for their own interest versus the interest of everybody just putting the information out. And then I also question, you know, the knowledge that's being put into it. But yeah, we could throw some graphs and stats up there and make it look all fancy and cool and... Add some music and some flashy stuff in the background and whatever it may be. But do you generally know what you're talking about on there? Let's take a look at, you know, 20 cards you bought and you still own today. What are the values of them? You know, stuff like that there. Your picks, how well are they doing now? How many people were only given their picks because they bought a whole ton of those and then they wanted to pump them and figure some other people would watch their videos, pump them too, pick them up, and then they tripled, quadrupled, 10x, 20x their value too. That's the one thing I would say is always I'm worried about somebody's intent behind when they do this stuff out there. The crash, as you guys know, I've stated a long time was going to happen. How it was going to be affected was going to come out basically on how the sports card industry itself was going to adapt to that change. Sorry, guys. My throat's real dry. Third time doing this video. <laughs> Stupid McAfee. I'm telling you, it's part of the Illuminati process. Didn't want me to do this. But when you really look at it as a whole picture, as an industry out there, nobody could foresee it. You know, there's always where I could see this and this and this going on, you know, between groups of, you know, 5, 10, 20, 30 people that have been good friends for a long time frame in some big group chat, disc, own private Discord, or whatever it may be out there. And they were able to troubleshoot stuff off of each other's ideas to help better assist them, position them in what they were doing. Um... We're still not going to ever see the end of scams. Scams are going to be around forever, guys. And that's just, I, you can't ever eliminate it. They're always going to be there. But having pure good ideas and being able to put out information 
that can be used and not try to be influenced into looking to a certain way. And I'll just use you an example. If I came out here and said, who's this guy right here? I don't know. I'm the sports card down. I'm like, this dude's a fool, you know, whatever. I'm just pulling a guy right off my screen. I don't even know who he is. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Don't watch his videos. That's me influence you telling you that. If I say, hey, this, this video is pretty good. You guys might want to watch it and see what you think of it and use it to your own conclusion. Some people will watch it and they'll be like, hey, it's a pretty good video. But the, it's because the information being given makes you think, man, could this be something good down the road to use, you know, as your own little personal analysis on your own hobby interest and stuff like that there? Because realistically... Not everybody can afford a case of NT or Flawless as it comes out. I mean, seriously, uh, case, two cases of Flawless is what I make in a year for my government job. And that's saying that they're worth 13000 a case. A uh, 13000 a briefcase, 26000 I'd still have some change left over, but that just gives you an idea. So... With the product that spiked up as so much as it did to where we were paying fifty to a hundred dollars years ago, we're probably not going to see that for some time frame. We still know what Fanatics is going to do yet. We can guess, we can try to read between the hidden lines, but nobody's going to know for sure until it really does happen and how to react to it. Again, I said this in plenty of times, even in overtime. Change. Everybody hates change. We get used and comfortable and complacent in what we're already used to. Change sucks. It really does. I'm not going to lie. It took me many years in the Army to get used to so much change and just go with it. The difference is, versus me being in the Army versus uh, sports cards, is I could walk away from sports cards. The Army, I just couldn't be like, I'm done. I could, but then I'd probably got in trouble and stuff like that, too. But always keep it as a grain of salt. Whatever you guys watch on videos um, out there. Use whatever information somebody's given you. If it don't sound right, to me it isn't right. Again, be careful buying cards because we got all kind of craziness out there. Use some of the, the tools and stuff in the videos. I mean, I hyperlink some of my stuff all the time on my phone. For the fact, like when I go to a show, if I wanted to buy a big card, I'm just going to use Kobe something auto, patch auto. And I'm just like, I know I've seen this card before. Is this the one that had to replace patch? I just go on my phone, go in that search bar, look it up, make sure that's not the right serial number and stuff like that. And it's just to make sure I don't fall into one of them traps and spend a lot of money. And next thing I know, I'm out a ton of money. All right, guys. Appreciate y'all watching the video, watching me go freestyle for a little bit here. Um, see if I get some uh, good video footage from Lexington this weekend. Hopefully it's a lot better to show more people come through. Other than that, have a good, safe Memorial Day, and I'll catch you guys next video.